Welcome back to Toronto. Thought it'd be a great day to just talk about some books about making bamboo fly rods and some books about the guys that made them. And you know, books to me are are knowledge. Knowledge is power. So whether you can get knowledge from books, from other builders, from the internet, which is always suspect. So remember, everything I say today is somewhat suspect. But uh, Books on bamboo rod making have been made forever. Here's a book around the 1900s, Fly Rods and Fly Tackle by H.P. Wells. This book was talks about all kinds of things, but Tonkin Cane, Calcutta Cane, Lancewood, Greenheart. You know, when they talk about the 70s in this book, they're talking about the 1870s. So I think that the first bamboo fly rod was said to be made in America around uh, 1845. So this book came, you know, shortly after, maybe around the... 19, early 1900s, 1901 maybe, something like that. Another book that came out in the early 1900s, Amateur Rod Making by Perry D. Fraser. These are great little books, fun to read. Not the one you would buy to learn to make rods today, but fun to read, lots of information, historical and empirical information that is always good to have in your memory banks. Everett Garrison talks about the idol of the split bamboo by Dr. Parker Holden in his video that he made with Hoagie. So here is a copy of that book. Again, quite an exhaustive book about building bamboo rods. This book's 100 years old. There was a company called Herders that was a place where everybody went to to buy their supplies for making rods. And this is the Rod Building Manual and Manufacturer's Guide that a friend George gave me. This book has lots of information. I also found it interesting about the taper design where they explain how tapers work and making a change in one part of the rod, what it can do. But again, fun to read, lots of information. George Leonard Herder, I think they're in Minnesota perhaps. Claude Creter wrote a book. This one has a forward by Jim Schaff, who was a, a builder of note. The Bamboo Rod and How to Build It, picture of a micrometer on there, um, measuring a strip of bamboo. Again, lots of information, not the book you would buy to learn to make rods today, but a book that you would certainly enjoy reading and get some information and see how simple it can really be. There was a gentleman, George Barnes, who I met at the Catskill Fly Fishing Gathering in Roscoe, New York, a number of times. He has since passed, but he had a great book, How to Make Bamboo Fly Rods. Just very simple, no CNC. No controllers, no fancy ovens, no bevelers. This guy just made rods in his basement. Since it wasn't hard to make, he refused to complicate it. And he made rods using simple hand tools, and they were quite nice. And if you've had a chance to see the video about Digger to Gare, you're going to see that it's not that complicated making bamboo rods. We make it far more complicated than it need be. There was a gentleman from the Pacific Northwest, Ray Gould. He had a couple of books, Cane Rod Tips and Tapers, Constructing Cane Rods. You know, here's a man who had a lifelong passion um, for building rods. and He was a hobbyist, essentially, and he made lots of rods, lots of tapers, and made a couple of books. So these are, I guess, we'd call them minor books, but anytime someone can take the time to produce a book they should be congratulated and there's always information in there that will help make you a better rod builder i guess the second book i got on fishing was called the fly and the fish by john atherton he was an illustrator in this book there's a fantastic chapter about his love affair with gillum rods and mr gillum was called pinky which i thought was pretty good so i probably got this book in the fifth grade and I heard about this mysterious Pinky Gillum. I'd only ever heard about Leonard or Payne Rod. So uh, again, a significant book to me, but also an excellent book to have in your library. Hoagie Carmichael, who has done so much for bamboo rod building, uh, has a, a book that came out, for, I don't know, seven years ago, possibly. It's called Eight, a number of interesting chapters, but in particular, a great chapter on Jim Payne and lots of information in there that had not been published before. And I've read that chapter over and over and always find something in there. One thing you'll find about rod building books is that as you develop your skills and make more rods, you're going to find that there's layers of information. Something that didn't register with you when you first read the book may not register until the third or fourth time because your 
once you've learned to make rods, the actual mechanics of making it, now you're looking at the subtleties of the craft and how to improve, improve your rods. So um, Jim Payne's a hero of mine, so what a fantastic chapter in this book. Uh, thanks to Hoagie Carmichael. Another great book, this one by Jim Schaff himself, uh, Dickerson. I believe that Jim ended up with a lot of his equipment. This book is full of anecdotes, stories, a, a lot of photographs of his materials. And what you learn from books like this is, oh, that's how they did it. Oh, that's what those dies are for. Oh, I see. That's what his mill looks like. So it's not so much a how-to book, but it's a, a book on Dickerson, who was a Michigan rod maker that made rods for that area of the world that performed beautifully and are, are highly prized today. Very powerful rods. Uh, and, and again, also a very nice design. Marty Keene was a, a noted tackle dealer. He's since passed. He wrote a book, Classic Rods and Rod Makers. This is one of the first books that I got about bamboo rod makers. Well, it's not an in-depth uh, treatise on every rod maker. It has all the major guys and covers it. It gives you a fantastic broad base of knowledge. And then you can go and try to find more information on your favorite guy. But there's Eastern builders and Western builders. Pretty much everyone is represented in here. Um, a fabulous book. You know, you can get this used. It's still not super expensive. A couple new books have come out. Split and Glued by Vincent Marinero. This was by Tom Harms and, uh, uh, sorry, Bill Harms and Tom Whittle. Um, more about the man who we all know as a fly tire who got into building bamboo rods because the rods that he had didn't perform the way he wanted them to do on his favorite river, the Latorte. So he designed rods to fish his way with his flies and his river. So I'm not a prolific rod maker, but uh, kind of an innovative guy that can get into building rods just because the conventional rods didn't suit his needs. Another gentleman who did a presentation at the Catskills Fly Rod Gathering about West Jordan. This is written by his son, and it's really more of a family anecdotal, the history of, as opposed to how to build rods or how rods were built by West Jordan. But of course, he was influential across South Bend, and then we know him from the West Jordan era at Orvis. So uh, again, interesting books, all of them. Ernie Schwiebert, I don't know how he got any work done because he seemed to be making massive books. This is his two-volume tome called Trout. He's got another one called Nymph, and lots of other books. But some great chapters on rods, rod making in here, so you, people forget about that sometimes, but within these massive um, books are a lot of information that would be forgotten if guys like Ernie didn't take the time to, to make these books. This is one of the few books written about bamboo fly rod repairs. It's kind of an odd book by my standards, by Stuart Kirkfield, but it is uh, one of the few that's done on, on repairing rods. It's expensive now because the book's hard to find. There weren't that many made. But um, The Master's Secrets of Restoration and Repair. I'm not sure if he was a master, but that's the book. There was a gentleman, a very innovative, Letcher Lambeth. He has a book, The Angler's Workshop. A great chapter in here on the spiral rod. Tom Smithwick did a presentation, perhaps 20 years ago now at Canadian Cane, where he did a spiral rod and uh, kind of blew everyone's mind at that point. But a guy like Letcher Lambeth, um, The Angler's Workshop, a well-known book. He was a Western guy. There was a great article in National Geographic, Bamboo, the Giant Grass, written by Lewis Martin. And he went on to, to pen this book, The Angler's Bamboo, so important, not about rod making, but about the material that we use to build our rods. And if guys like Lewis Martin didn't write these articles, didn't make these books, then we wouldn't know about it. And that information would be gone with each generation. So just a fabulous book uh, about his love affair with Tonkin Kane. I have some friends in Japan. They were kind enough to bring me this fishing magazine and they said, you know, this man, well, of course, it's Walt Carpenter. And I did have the pleasure of meeting Walden and spending some time with him at the Catskill Gathering, but not exactly a close personal friend. But isn't it crazy that we, these guys over in Japan are, are revering him? Of course, I went the wrong way because it's a Japanese book. Um, great, just fantastic. Worldwide uh, love affair with bamboo rods. 
And perhaps the, the books that were the most impactful to me was Handcrafting Bamboo Fly Rods from Wayne Catnaw. Wayne was the gentleman who first showed me how to build a rod, and I appreciate that. Now, I think this book has been reprinted into paperback now, but this was the original one. It was kind of a, kind of a homemade kind of book, but uh, very well thought out, very methodical, very interesting. Perhaps the most famous of the books is uh, the Garrison Carmichael book, A Master's Guide to Building a Bamboo Fly Rod. Uh, this book is, I guess, most known for the fact that it was the first book that really opened up how to build a rod. It showed you that you could do it at home. While the book is advanced, I would say, it's a lot of information, definitely when you go over slowly and glean all the information. It's one most rod makers have in their collection. For beginners, it's a little bit overwhelming perhaps, but just a fantastic book and maybe the most important book of, uh, of the modern era. George Maurer had a student, Bernard Elser, who he taught and Bernard wanted to do a book, so he did it with George. And this is the book that I use with my students. Of all the books, it's the most textbook-like very well thought out chapter by chapter shows you how to build a rod, shows you how simple it really is and how uncomplicated it can be. Um, super important book. And then the lovely read. Uh, this book was falling out of favor somewhat because it was so expensive because you couldn't get a used one and prices were in the upper $200. Now thankfully this book's been reprinted. It's now affordable once again. Uh, Jack Howell wrote this book. A lot of people think this is one of the better, best books around, so everyone has their own opinion. But I think the three books that, um, if you're getting into rod building, the um, George Maurer book, the Jack Howell book, the Garrison book, they're the ones that are the most current, that have the easiest information. Ultimately, possibly you can get all three. I know this book is in soft cover is only $30 on Amazon. Just a great book if you have the chance to get it, and gr thankfully it's available again. So, so many choices, so many books. Anyone that takes the time to write a book should be recognized. It's a significant accomplishment. Um, they span generations. They help people. Um, they help pass the time when maybe you're not able to build rods, you're busy doing other things, busy at work with, with your children. At least you can take half an hour a day and go through these books and, and get some more information. So hopefully you've enjoyed this quick guide to some of the books available. There are, of course, many, many more. Um, good luck with your rod building. Hope you're out there in the shop. This is James in Toronto saying thanks for watching.